Welcome to this recording, made in the presence of a live audience. Please bear with us for any minor fluctuations in sound. Now let's dive into exploring techniques I've come across that can aid us in cultivating self-love. Followers of the Course in Miracles are familiar with the principle of forgiving and loving oneself. It's often quoted, love thy neighbor as thyself, yet many overlook the crucial as thyself part. True love for others stems from first loving oneself. It's puzzling why we've strayed from this essential self-appreciation. When I speak of self-love, it's not about vanity or arrogance, which are rooted in fear, not love. Rather, it's about honoring and treasuring the remarkable miracle of our existence. Each of us is inherently extraordinary, divine beings expressing life in magnificent ways. It's crucial to recognize this within ourselves. When we do, we align with the universe. Life flows effortlessly. So, let's not only extend love to our neighbors, but also start by loving ourselves. It's where the journey begins. It's fascinating how much resistance we often have towards certain ideas. Tonight, I'd like to delve into some thoughts on life and how one can genuinely embrace self-love. Establishing clear guidelines for self-love and consistently practicing them can lead to remarkable transformations in our lives. Personally, I adhere to simple principles, though some may find them overly simplistic or even absurd. However, time and again, I've witnessed their effectiveness when embraced and applied. Remember, even if you only take away one valuable insight tonight to enhance your life, that's a win. You don't need to grasp or agree with everything I say. It all seeps into your subconscious, ready to be utilized or dismissed as needed. Ultimately, you hold the reins of your life. You're in control of what resonates with you. I could share countless ideas, but if they don't align with your desires, that's entirely your prerogative. So let's explore together and have a fulfilling time enriching our lives. At times, we tend to approach self-improvement with a seriousness that may involve a considerable amount of effort or even pain. However, it's crucial to recognize that self-growth can also be fueled by joy. If you're looking to cultivate self-love, I recommend initiating the process with these 10 steps I've outlined. The foremost and most pivotal step, if truly grasped, has the potential to render the others unnecessary. This initial step involves ceasing all self-criticism immediately and perpetually. Make a solemn commitment to refrain from criticizing yourself henceforth. Despite years of self-critique, often for the same reasons, it's clear that this approach hasn't yielded the desired results. So, let's experiment with a different strategy. Begin by acknowledging and embracing yourself as you are, while still being open to positive changes. Personally, I experienced a revelation when I realized that I could make life-altering changes without deeming myself a bad person. There's no need to be in a negative state before making improvements. You can start from a place of self-acceptance. Criticizing oneself seldom brings about positive transformations. Instead, choose to abstain from self-criticism and embrace your current self. Remember, change is inevitable for everyone, but when you endorse and accept yourself, the changes that follow are more likely to be positive. Our capacity to adapt and evolve, to flow harmoniously with the currents of life, embodies our innate ability to heal. This inherent power is within each of us. As powerful beings, our strength lies in the conscious selection of our thoughts and the words we utter. Our thoughts possess creative energy, 
shaping our realities and influencing every facet of our existence. Despite the fleeting nature of thoughts, we wield the power to choose them deliberately. Opt for thoughts that nurture and uplift, that align with your well-being. To truly love oneself, it is imperative to cease all self-criticism indefinitely. This shift is achievable. Simply commit to it wholeheartedly. Furthermore, refrain from instilling fear within yourself. Loving yourself means banishing terrorizing thoughts that only exacerbate situations rather than alleviate them. Resist the urge to magnify minor issues into monstrous ones and avoid amplifying already daunting circumstances. Embrace a mindset of self-compassion and empowerment, for therein lies the path to genuine self-love and healing. Support yourself. Living with self-neglect is a destructive way of life, and if you find yourself caught in this pattern, it's crucial to put an end to it. Cease it completely. How often do we find ourselves lying in bed, repeatedly dwelling on problems, envisioning the worst possible outcomes? This tendency extends to various aspects of life. Health, where a minor ache leads to planning our own funeral, Relationships, where a missed call convinces us we're unlovable and destined for loneliness. And work, where a casual remark makes us fear imminent termination. We often amplify these concerns in our minds. It's important to recognize that these fearful thoughts serve as negative affirmations. If you're accustomed to entertaining such unsettling thoughts, one effective approach is to replace them with positive imagery. Find an image of something you truly cherish and love. Find something that brings you joy, a sport, a sunset, a beautiful view, flowers, anything will do. Let this be your mental refuge. Whenever negativity creeps in or fear starts to grip you, switch to this happy thought or image. Don't battle the negative thoughts head on. Instead, Gently guide your mind towards something positive. Choose your own mental sanctuary, whether it's a serene sunset, cascading waterfalls, or luxurious yachts. With consistent practice, this simple act of redirection can break the cycle of negativity. Remember, it's a skill that requires nurturing. Treat yourself with love and kindness. Stop frightening yourself needlessly. The third step is to practice gentleness, kindness, and patience towards yourself. Think of it like tending to a garden. Initially, it's just a patch of soil, but with seeds, sunlight, water, and care, transformations begin. At first, progress may seem slow, almost imperceptible. Yet, if you persist patiently, changes will unfurl. Your life, your mind, they're akin to gardens. What kind of garden do you want to cultivate? Consider the events you desire in your life and the seeds required to make them happen. Choose thoughts that contribute to cultivating the garden of experiences you seek. Imagine planting these thoughts in the fertile soil of your subconscious, allowing them to be nurtured and grow. With careful attention, you can eventually harvest a bountiful and beautiful collection of the things you desire. Embrace new ways of thinking. For those who have been on a self-improvement journey for a while, some of tonight's insights may echo what you already know. If you're just beginning your path of self-discovery, some concepts might seem absurd or challenging to accept. Remember, Resistance is a natural part of the process of bringing about change. When you ponder the question, how can I cultivate self-love? You've already taken the initial steps toward embracing self-love, considering there may have been a time when you wouldn't have entertained such thoughts. As you familiarize yourself with new perspectives, approach this journey with kindness, gentleness, and patience. 
just like tending to a garden, be vigilant for the weeds representing old negative thoughts and swiftly uproot them. Treat yourself with the same care and compassion you would extend to someone you deeply appreciate or a tender child. Your self-worth deserves that level of importance. It's perfectly normal to make mistakes as you learn. You don't need to aim for perfection right away. Many of us struggle with perfectionism, preventing use from truly embracing new learning experiences. We often give up too soon if we don't get it perfect immediately. But remember, mastering anything takes time. When starting something new, it often feels awkward at first. Let's try something. Interlace your fingers. There's no correct way to do it. Just clasp your hands and notice which thumb naturally rests on top. Now, unclasp and reclasp with the other thumb on top. How does that feel? Strange, different, maybe even wrong. Now, switch back and forth a few times. Notice how each time it feels less awkward. With repetition, it becomes more comfortable. Eventually, you might even master both ways. Well, when it comes to learning anything new, the initial attempt often feels awkward, unfamiliar, and just not quite right. Our natural inclination is to pass judgment right away. However, with a bit of consistent practice, the once unusual and strange can transform into the norm. So, as you embark on incorporating affirmations or adjusting your mindset, remember that all it takes is a little practice. You won't achieve everything in a single day and self-love won't happen overnight. Yet, if you can incrementally increase your self-love even by a small fraction each day, like a quarter of an inch, you'll be amazed. Imagine, in just two or three months, the cumulative effect of these daily small increments could result in a significantly greater love for yourself. It's truly astonishing how a little extra love each day can make a remarkable difference. You know, every morning you have the opportunity to awaken with the intention of loving yourself more than yesterday. When you make that declaration, the universe listens and conspires to help you achieve it. Now on to point number four. Practice kindness towards your own mind. Self-hatred boils down to simply disliking the thoughts we have about ourselves, nothing more. Instead of hating ourselves for our thoughts, we should gently work on reshaping them. Every single one of us is inherently worthy of love, regardless of any beliefs we might have inherited from our upbringing. Love isn't something we must earn. Just like the right to breathe freely, we deserve love simply because we exist. We are inherently lovable, and we must internalize and embrace this truth. When it comes to thoughts, I often emphasize the power of affirmations. It's crucial to recognize that every thought we entertain and every word we utter serves as an affirmation. Unfortunately, many times these affirmations tend to lean towards the negative spectrum, often without our conscious awareness. Yet these very words and thoughts hold the reins to our future and shape our experiences. Affirmations, on the other hand, offer a pathway to consciously sculpting our reality. By crafting positive statements, we can usher in new wonders into our lives or bid farewell to aspects we wish to discard. Engaging in affirmations stands as one of the finest gestures of self-compassion. It involves deliberately formulating statements that uplift and empower us rather than tearing us down. Consider reframing your perspective on your thoughts as constructive rather than destructive forces. Many of us, myself included, have fallen into the pattern of self-criticism through our own internal dialogue, yet, Treating oneself with kindness through positive thinking yields immeasurable benefits. It's an investment that pays off immensely. Moreover, it's valuable to discern between taking responsibility for our actions 
and succumbing to the trap of blame. Steer clear of falling into the trap of associating negative experiences with personal inadequacy. This pattern is harmful. Responsibility involves consciously choosing how to react to situations or ideas. What kind of mindset will you adopt? When faced with an experience, consider what you can learn from it. Dr. Bernie Siegel, in his latest book, Peace, Love, and Healing, notes that individuals with terminal illnesses who surpass statistical expectations share a common trait. They accept responsibility for decisions impacting their lives. They don't blame themselves, but acknowledge responsibility. Blame entails self-condemnation for thoughts or experiences leading to guilt, which in turn seeks punishment, ultimately causing pain. Being compassionate towards yourself entails letting go of blame, guilt, punishment, and pain. Respond to yourself and life with love and kindness. Another act of kindness you can grant yourself is to simply relax. Relaxation is crucial for healing. When we are tense and anxious, it hampers the flow of healing energies within us. It's as if we are blocking the flow of energy. Taking just a minute or two several times a day to let go and relax can make a significant difference. At any given moment, you have the power to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths, releasing any tension you may be carrying. Let's try it together now. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and exhale letting go of any tension or fear. Repeat this process once more, breathing deeply and releasing all stress. With each exhale, allow yourself to center and find peace. You might even silently affirm to yourself, I love you, all is well. Notice how much lighter your body feels in this moment. It didn't take long at all. Practicing this several times a day sends a comforting message to your body. It's perfectly all right. There's no need to navigate through life with tension and fear. You have the capacity to remain calm while managing whatever comes your way. Another act of kindness towards yourself is embracing meditation. In our society, we've often shrouded meditation in mystery, presenting it as a daunting task to master. However, meditation is one of the oldest and simplest practices available to us. All it requires is finding a quiet space, sitting or lying down comfortably, closing your eyes, and taking a few deep breaths. Your body naturally responds by relaxing. There's no need to exert effort. Relaxation occurs effortlessly. You can choose to focus on words like love, peace, healing, or any meaningful affirmations. Perhaps, I love myself, I forgive and accept forgiveness, or I am open to learning. Then simply sit quietly, allowing your mind to settle. Answers may come immediately or over time. Personally, I often ask, what is it that I need to understand? And then patiently await the insight. You don't have to rush simply allow things to unfold naturally. Keep in mind, your mind naturally gravitates towards thought. It's an incessant process. Some individuals mistakenly believe that meditation entails halting the stream of thoughts altogether. However, what you can do is slow down the rapid flow of thoughts. Simply observe them as they pass through while meditating. You may recognize thoughts such as, that's fear, there goes anger, that's a catastrophic scenario, or that's an abandonment concern. By not attaching significance to these thoughts, they drift away like gentle clouds on a summer day and you simply witness their departure. There is no incorrect way to meditate. Whatever approach you initially take is suitable for you. If you start somewhere, and allow it to become a practice, you'll realize that each of us harbors profound wisdom within. I firmly believe that all the answers to life's questions lie within us. 
Unfortunately, most of the time, we're too caught up in the theatrics and turmoil of our lives, what we perceive as our personal soap opera, to quiet our minds and listen to our inner selves. Engaging in meditation carves out a tranquil space where our inner voices can finally be heard. It's astonishing how much wisdom lies within us, waiting to be discovered once we silence the noise around us. Within you lies the capacity for self-care and self-guidance, if only you allow yourself to tune in. By embracing moments of quiet reflection, such as through meditation, you establish a profound connection with your inner being. Think of meditation as a dedicated focus on your inner voice, a practice of attentive listening. Visualization plays a crucial role too. By conjuring vivid mental images, you amplify your positive affirmations. During my battle with cancer, I visualized a stream of cool, cleansing water coursing through my body, purging it of illness while fortifying my health. Some prefer to visualize combating their ailment, but personally, I find peace in imagery that promotes healing rather than conflict. Whether it's the gentle warmth of sunlight melting away afflictions or the transformative power of love, the key is to envision positive change. Everyone has the capacity for visualization. Whether it's picturing the details of your home or indulging in a personal fantasy, these mental images reveal the inseparable link between mind and body. It's a reminder that within our minds lie the seeds of healing and transformation waiting to bloom with nurturing attention. Isn't it incredible what the mind is capable of achieving? Let's harness these visualizations positively to truly amplify your endeavors. Just as negative visualizations can exacerbate a tough situation, positive visualizations can make it better. Moving on, point number five, practice self-praise. It's essential. Criticism chips away at our inner strength while praise nurtures it. So, shower yourself with praise at every opportunity. Acknowledge your accomplishments no matter how small. Many of us sabotage our efforts to create a fulfilling life because we doubt our worthiness. This sense of unworthiness may stem from past criticisms or seemingly trivial childhood experiences, like early toilet training or being denied an ice cream cone. But deservingness isn't about having good things, it's about allowing goodness into our lives. Embrace the good, whether you believe you deserve it or not. Speaking of deservingness, let's delve into some questions to help you recognize and embrace the abundance the universe offers. What do you feel you deserve? Love, joy, all good things? Or do you harbor a deep-seated belief that you deserve nothing? Let's explore why. Where does that message originate? Are you open to releasing it? What new message would you like to embrace? Consider this, negative messages, those whispering you're undeserving or unworthy, are merely thoughts they can be reshaped. What do you desire that seems out of reach? Clarify your wants and your sense of worth. Reflect on the notions of deserving instilled in your upbringing. Were you told you didn't deserve? Perhaps you were made to feel deserving of punishment. Did your caregivers believe in their own worthiness? Were you conditioned to believe that worth must be earned? Did you lose privileges when you erred as a child? Now, do you genuinely believe you deserve? Do you feel adequate, intelligent, attractive, capable, or whatever else you aspire to be? Identify the beliefs hindering your sense of deserving. Are you convinced you're not good enough? That there's a scarcity of resources? That success is beyond your grasp? What beliefs stand in your way? Lastly, ask yourself, what gives your life purpose? What gives your life meaning? Why are you here? 
and what purpose have you discovered for yourself? You're not merely existing to acquire possessions like a new car every few years. There's a deeper reason behind your existence. So, what is it? What steps are you willing to take to manifest the fulfillment you truly deserve? Are you open to practicing affirmations, engaging in visualizations, or undergoing treatments? Can you find it within yourself to forgive others and commit to regular relaxation and meditation? Consider how much mental energy you're prepared to invest in transforming your life. These are questions worth pondering. Moving on to the sixth point about self-love, supporting yourself is crucial. Seek out avenues of support, whether through friends or community resources. Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. It's a demonstration of strength to recognize when you need assistance instead of struggling alone and resenting yourself for it. Remember, there are numerous resources available from friends to support groups, including the abundance of 12-step programs tailored to various challenges. I'm certain you'll find them here, just as we do in Los Angeles. There are comprehensive lists detailing their activities. In certain areas, you'll encounter healing circles and many churches host support groups. And if you can't locate what you seek, there's always the option to initiate your own. Yes, start your very own support group. All it takes is a compassionate mindset and a willingness to encourage others. Initiating a support group might seem daunting to some. They desire the community but feel unsure about the process. However, it's simpler than you think. Simply gather two or three friends who share similar challenges and adhere to a few basic guidelines. With love as your guiding force, your small gathering will inevitably flourish. It's remarkable how people are drawn to such initiatives. And don't fret about space as your group expands. The universe always provides. Now, on to the seventh point regarding self-love. Embrace your flaws with love. Every negative pattern and habit you possess was formed to fulfill a need and they served their purpose. Understand that we've all made negative choices in the past. However, one is never trapped by these patterns. The encouraging truth is that you always retain the power of choice. You can opt for a different path, always capable of letting go of the familiar but unhelpful patterns. Instead, you can embrace thoughts that nurture and support you. Releasing the grip of old negative patterns with kindness paves the way for effortless transition into new positive ones. This approach significantly eases the process. Conversely, holding on to self-punishing thoughts such as, I hate my job, I hate this illness, or I hate this relationship, only perpetuates the cycle of discontent. It binds you to what you despise, preventing any new and enriching experiences from entering your life, broadcasting negativity. Like I hate my job sends a clear message to the universe, effectively inviting more of what you despise into your life. Thus, if you were to obtain a new job, chances are you'd soon find yourself disliking it as well simply because of the negative energy you've projected. Instead, practice releasing with love. Bid farewell to anything in your life that brings you dissatisfaction, doing so with a compassionate heart. By doing this, you create space for new opportunities to manifest. Remember, when faced with adversity, affirm your self-worth and willingness to let go of negative patterns. Replace them with positive affirmations, such as, I deserve only goodness in my life. This mindset shift, coupled with self-love, sets the stage for a more fulfilling existence. I embrace the transformative energies of the universe, allowing them to permeate my being 
and catalyze positive change in my life. Our thoughts and words wield immense power, shaping our reality. It's crucial to recognize that amidst any challenges we face, we are not at fault. We are always doing our best, given our circumstances, continually striving to navigate life's complexities. In Love Your Disease, Dr. John Harrison astutely emphasizes the importance of acknowledging patients for their coping mechanisms, however unconventional they may seem. Rather than condemning individuals for their health struggles, we should commend their resilience in finding ways to meet their needs safely. Every aspect of our lives, including our health, is a product of our responses to various situations. Instead of harboring self-blame or resentment, we must focus on finding healthier ways to address our needs. Ultimately, it's about channeling our energy into positive avenues, fostering growth and well-being. Let us redirect our focus towards nurturing ourselves and embracing constructive solutions. Indeed, humor stands as a potent remedy for clinging on to negativity for too long. Amidst our relentless self-improvement endeavors, we often overlook the need to simply lighten up, don't you think? Laughter possesses remarkable healing properties. Consider Norman Cousins. He famously cured himself of illness by indulging in Three Stooges films, laughing his way back to health. He even penned an entire book on his experience. Now, on to the eighth aspect of self-love, caring for your body. Think of it as the dwelling you inhabit throughout your life's journey. From the moment you enter this world to your departure, it remains your abode. Thus, cherish and maintain it. Seek out physical activities that bring you joy, ones that you genuinely enjoy engaging in. Additionally, be mindful of what you nourish your body with. Substance abuse has unfortunately become pervasive often serving as a popular means of escape. Yet, indulging in drugs doesn't inherently make someone a bad person. Rather, it suggests a quest for fulfillment through avenues yet to be discovered. Drugs allure use, promising fleeting euphoria, and indeed for a moment they deliver. However, what becomes obscured initially is the steep price we eventually pay as they distort our reality. After a prolonged intake of these substances, your overall health rapidly declines, leaving you in a perpetual state of discomfort. Furthermore, there's a detrimental dependency that develops. It makes you question the rationale behind taking these substances in the first place. While peer pressure might lead us to experiment with drugs initially, sustained usage takes a toll of its own. I've yet to encounter someone genuinely embracing self-love while being entangled in substance abuse. The impact of drugs on our immune systems is alarming. Despite the initial escape they offer, the reality is that drugs only provide a temporary respite. The root cause often lies in a lack of self-love and appreciation for who we are. Attempting to erase childhood feelings of inadequacy through substance use proves futile. The fleeting effects of drugs or alcohol leave us feeling worse than before, accompanied by a burden of guilt. It's crucial to recognize that it's safe to experience and process our emotions. Loving ourselves includes allowing the natural flow of feelings without resorting to substances as a coping mechanism. Food meant to nourish our bodies and provide energy sometimes becomes a tool for self-punishment. Despite knowing the fundamentals of good nutrition, many still misuse diet and food to suppress emotions, leading to issues like overeating and obesity. We find ourselves amidst health crises of our own making, evolving into a society of junk food enthusiasts. Regrettably, it seems we've surrendered our eating habits 
to the influence of major food corporations and their relentless advertising. Moreover, the medical profession often neglects proper nutrition education, treating it as an optional pursuit rather than a fundamental aspect of health care. Consequently, most doctors lack substantial knowledge in this domain. Present medical practices predominantly focus on surgical procedures and pharmaceutical interventions, leaving nutrition on the periphery. To truly understand nutrition, we must take initiative into our own hands. It's an act of self-care to become conscious of what we consume and its impact on our well-being. For instance, if you feel drowsy shortly after a meal, it prompts reflection on our dietary choices and their effects on our energy levels. What have I been consuming lately? Perhaps there's something in my diet that isn't serving my body well in this particular moment and space. It's crucial to start paying attention to what nourishes us and what drains us of energy. We can embark on this journey of discovery through personal experimentation or seek guidance from a knowledgeable nutritionist who can offer insights tailored to our individual needs. Moreover, there exists a plethora of alternative therapies worth exploring to determine their suitability for us. Recognizing that each body is unique and what works for one may not work for another. Personally, I have a fondness for acupuncture, but there are numerous other modalities such as herbology, homeopathy, flower remedies, various forms of bodywork, massage, aromatherapy, and sound therapy. I'm particularly intrigued by the potential of sound waves to enhance both learning and healing processes. We find ourselves in an era where cutting-edge technologies intersect with age-old healing traditions, presenting boundless possibilities for integration and advancement. As we journey through the remaining decades of this century, the wealth of knowledge awaiting us is vast. It's crucial, therefore, to cherish our bodies as an expression of self-love. One practice I hold dear is mirror work. Witnessing numerous individuals transform their lives simply by gazing into the mirror and affirming, I love you, truly, deeply love you, has been profound. Initially, this act may feel foreign, even unsettling, evoking emotions of sadness, anger, or fear. Yet, with consistent repetition, this simple affirmation catalyzes an inner shift. Gradually, we release destructive patterns and embrace our inherent worthiness. Mirror work can be integrated into daily life in various ways. For me, a morning ritual involves standing before the mirror, uttering words of love and asking, how can I nurture you today? What brings you joy? Do you ever engage in such introspection, especially upon waking? Listen intently to the responses and commit to honoring them. Initially, your inner dialogue may falter, accustomed as it is to self-criticism, but persist, for therein lies the path to self-compassion and fulfillment. Take a moment to truly listen to yourself and commit to trusting your instincts. When faced with adversity, rush to the mirror and affirm, I love you, no matter what. Understand that while challenges may come and go, your self-love remains unwavering and paramount in your life. It's not about the fleeting experiences, but rather the enduring love you hold for yourself. Similarly, when something delightful occurs, embrace the mirror and express gratitude with, thank you, thank you, thank you. Recognize your role in manifesting positivity. The mirror can also be a tool for forgiveness gaze into your own eyes and say, I forgive you for clinging to old habits, for neglecting self-love. We tend to be our harshest critics, berating ourselves for the smallest missteps. Yet every one of us can benefit from daily forgiveness and self-compassion. At times, 
When I gaze into the mirror, I affirm I am forgiven. I extend forgiveness to you, and in turn I am forgiven. I choose to forgive, and thus I am forgiven. It's essential to recognize that this process is reciprocal. The mirror serves as a conduit for communication with others. Within its reflection, we can express thoughts and emotions we might hesitate to voice in person. It's a space for reconciliation, for addressing lingering issues and extending forgiveness. Moreover, it's a powerful tool for seeking validation and understanding, whether it's from our parents, a partner, a medical professional, or an authority figure like a boss. The mirror grants us the courage to articulate our innermost feelings and desires, especially the universal yearning for love and approval. Ultimately, affirmations spoken in front of the mirror hold profound potency because they resonate with the inherent truth it reflects. When you face negativity while gazing into the mirror, consider it a valuable opportunity. Instead of being disheartened, view it as a chance to address an old, passing negative thought. If you affirm self-love and encounter doubt, recognize it as just a fleeting negative notion. Respond with gratitude, saying, thank you for sharing. Don't dwell on the negative. Either downplay its importance or transform it into a positive affirmation. Take a moment daily to gaze into your eyes and sincerely declare, I love you. Embrace self-love immediately without waiting for improvement in health, weight, career, or relationships. Act now and give yourself the love you deserve. If you're currently unhappy with yourself and find yourself thinking, I'll love myself once I land that new job, shed those extra pounds, or enter a new relationship, be aware that this mindset will likely persist even after achieving those goals. The discontent with oneself is a habitual pattern. If you can embrace satisfaction and self-love in the present moment, you'll be better equipped to appreciate the positive changes that come your way in the future. Don't postpone it. The key is to be willing, ready to love and approve of yourself now. You might not have all the answers or find the process easy, but starting with the simple willingness to learn to love yourself is a powerful first step. I'm open to cultivating self-love within myself. Trust that the universe will respond as our subconscious always affirms our desires. You'll notice a shift towards positivity. Once you've embraced and cherished yourself entirely, you'll naturally extend that compassion to others. It's crucial to recognize that we can't force change upon others. Part of loving oneself is releasing the urge to alter those around us, letting them be. Imagine redirecting the energy we invest in changing others towards self-improvement. Through personal growth, our lives undergo a transformative shift. You can't absorb lessons on behalf of someone else. Each person must navigate their own learning journey. However, you can certainly learn for yourself. It's essential to prioritize self-love to shield yourself from the influence of destructive or negative individuals. While everyone is entitled to their thoughts and choices, it's crucial not to compromise your well-being. If you find yourself entangled with someone persistently negative and unwilling to change, it's a signal to prioritize your own self-worth and distance yourself from that dynamic. Too often, we endure toxic relationships for extended periods, perhaps even tolerating abuse, under the mistaken belief that we are undeserving of better treatment. This damaging self-perception stems from within, not from external sources. By challenging and reshaping these negative beliefs about ourselves, we discover that our interactions and circumstances improve. I may come across as repetitive, but I firmly believe that embracing self-love is the most efficient path 
to addressing any challenge in our lives. It's remarkable how our energy shifts and how others respond to us when we genuinely appreciate ourselves. True healing and fulfillment stem from self-love. So ask yourself, are you ready to love yourself? When we genuinely love ourselves, we prevent self-harm and refrain from harming others. This, to me, is the key to inner peace and global harmony. Unconditional self-love is our ultimate objective, and it begins with accepting and cherishing ourselves. You are here on this planet with a purpose. Your journey is about self-fulfillment and the profound expression of love. When your time here ends, the only thing you'll carry forward is your capacity to love. Not possessions, relationships, or status, just the ability to love deeply. So, how can you nurture self-love and radiate more love into the world? Through my experiences and learning, I've crafted a set of core beliefs that guide me. These principles are simple yet comprehensive covering all aspects of my life. I'd like to share them with you. To start, I firmly believe in my safety regardless of where I find myself. This conviction is ingrained in me. Wherever I am, I am shielded from harm. I trust in the universe's protective embrace, guiding me ceaselessly. Moreover, I have unwavering faith that all the knowledge essential to my journey unfolds before me effortlessly. There's no need for me to strain. Wisdom flows to me naturally. Whatever information I require, I receive it clearly and promptly. I've discarded the habit of scouring newspapers or tuning into the news. If it's pertinent, it will find its way to me. Furthermore, I am confident that everything I need arrives precisely when it should. I relinquish the futile effort of forcing outcomes. I declare my intentions to the universe and surrender the rest. Like a diner in a cosmic kitchen, I've placed my order, trusting the skilled chefs to prepare it to perfection. You know, it's quite remarkable when you engage in affirmations and such. Often we recite them and then find ourselves striving to bring them to fruition. However, think about when you're at a restaurant, when you place your order and the waiter or waitress takes it to the kitchen. You don't feel compelled to follow them and oversee the process. You trust that it's being handled. Similarly, you can apply that same trust to your affirmations. When you affirm something you desire, you can simply acknowledge that's taken care of. Whenever it crosses your mind, reaffirm that it's in motion. I focus on what's immediately in front of me, knowing that what's meant for me will unfold in its own perfect timing. Remarkably, countless blessings enter my life, some I've actively sought, others completely unexpected. Loving yourself opens the door to incredible opportunities and experiences, absolutely. I strongly believe that life is a source of joy and love, and as I embrace this belief, it manifests as truth in my reality. Each morning, I wake up with a heart brimming with joy, and I encounter it in almost every aspect of my life. The heart's purpose is to radiate joy throughout our beings, and all we need to do is clear away negative thoughts to allow this natural process to unfold. As we sow, so shall we reap. Thus, our beliefs shape our reality. I also hold firm to the belief that I am both capable of love and worthy of receiving it. I strive to operate from a place of love within my heart whenever possible. Admittedly, this is a continual lesson for all of us, and I acknowledge that I may falter at times. However, whenever I find myself veering off course, I make a conscious effort to realign, knowing that by giving love, I attract even more into my life. The abundance of love surrounding me these days is truly remarkable, 
beyond anything I could have envisioned. Moreover, I affirm that prosperity follows me wherever I go. Rather than chasing after wealth, I ask myself, how can I be of service? I understand that the key to increasing my income lies in the mental groundwork I lay. The beliefs I adopt either draw wealth towards me or push it away. Therefore, I choose to accept and embrace affirmations like, my income is constantly growing. This belief reinforces the idea that no matter where I currently stand financially, there's always room for expansion. Consequently, prosperity flows effortlessly into my life and my income continues to grow steadily. I embrace the notion of growth and transformation. Far from claiming to possess all knowledge, I recognize the vast expanse of what I have yet to learn. I remain open to fresh perspectives, welcoming new ideas and insights into my life. When I encounter something novel, I am unafraid to adjust my beliefs and outlook. Over the past two decades, I've undergone significant changes, a testament to my willingness to introspect and evolve. Rather than striving for some abstract notion of betterment, I see personal development as a journey towards realizing more of my authentic self. Embracing change is a beautiful aspect of life. I readily shed old ways that no longer serve me, understanding that growth is an inherent part of existence. Crucially, I affirm that all is well within my world. This conviction grants me a sense of serenity, regardless of life's twists and turns. I trust in the inherent goodness of life's unfolding, confident that every experience serves my highest good. These beliefs anchor me, guiding my path with assurance and positivity. Consider the beliefs you wish to embrace as your guiding principles. Craft a personal creed that resonates with you and reinforce these beliefs through affirmations, anchoring their truth within yourself. This practice serves as an act of self-love, establishing a framework that aligns with your values and aspirations. Strive to cultivate love for yourself and others, shedding negative patterns and thoughts in favor of unconditional love. Embrace happiness and invite joy into your life whenever possible. Now, I'd like to introduce Jerry Florence, who will lead us in a meditation. Utilizing pioneering techniques in sound frequency healing by Dr. Jeffrey Thompson, my voice has been transformed to enhance its healing properties. Close your eyes if you wish and breathe deeply. As the modified sound of my voice washes over you, allow it to permeate your mind and body, facilitating a sense of calm and serenity. Tonight, we've explored various concepts and ideas stirring the pot of introspection. Let these thoughts settle within you. You need not fully embrace or comprehend everything at once. Trust that in due time, the wisdom and clarity you seek will naturally surface. Each and every one of us possesses the capacity to nurture self-love, each deserving of affection and a fulfilling existence. We merit wellness, prosperity, and the warmth of both giving and receiving love. Every individual, even the most vulnerable like a newborn, is entitled to a life rich with opportunity and joy. Visualize yourself enveloped in love, envisioning a state of contentment and vitality. Construct a detailed mental image of your desired life firmly believing in your worthiness of such fulfillment. Engage in a visualization exercise, picturing this reality and allow the love within your heart to flow freely. Let it permeate your being, extending outward to those around you. Direct your love towards others, offering support and well wishes to those on your left and right. Visualize sending healing energies 
and comfort to those in need, creating a ripple effect of positivity and light. Expand this circle of love to encompass the entire room, generating a collective atmosphere of warmth and compassion. Feel the love circulating, returning to you in abundance. Understand that love is the most potent form of healing and embrace its continuous flow. Bathe in its comforting embrace, allowing it to rejuvenate and uplift you. We are united in this beautiful circle of love, interconnected and bound by our shared humanity. Carry this love with you into the world, silently spreading its warmth to all you encounter. Love yourself, love others, love the earth, recognizing the inherent oneness of all existence. With gratitude, we acknowledge the power of love and its transformative impact on our lives. And so it is. Thank you. Louise Hay's video about self-love serves as a poignant reminder of the profound meaning of cultivating a deep appreciation for yourself. Through her insightful guidance, she emphasizes the fundamental truth that self-love is not a mere frivolous act, but a transformative journey to appreciate your inherent value and uniqueness of a person. By emphasizing the key roles of forgiveness, acceptance, and positive self-talk, she illuminates practical steps for cultivating self-love and removing the barriers of self-criticism and self-talk. Scared, Louise Hay emphasizes the power of deeply resonant thoughts and affirmations, reminding us of our ability to shape our reality through intentional and nurturing self-dialogue. As we internalize these teachings, we embark on a path toward personal growth and fulfillment, realizing that self-love is not only a gift we deserve, but also the foundation, essential foundation for a fulfilling life. Ultimately, Louise Hay's message resonates with the universal truth that every individual deserves to be loved, including oneself. In a world where compassion often begins with how we treat ourselves, loving ourselves becomes a radical act of kindness and empowerment. As we integrate these principles into our lives, may we continue our journey toward greater self-compassion, authenticity, and wholeness, enriching not only our lives ourselves, but also the lives of those around us.